Hello guys and welcome to another David Zamaletta. My name is Serge and welcome to my Mazda RX-8 channel. I recently became an owner of a Mazda RX-8 and I really enjoy the car but we have some issues and in this video I want to actually address some of these issues. In later videos I'm going to show you how I'm actually going to fix them and also I want to talk a little bit about pre-mixing and just show you everything that's actually going on with my car. Please enjoy the video. Let's start my Mazda RX-8 and go to the gas station. As you can see, it starts up good. But if I leave my Mazda RX-8 sitting for about, a, you know, like four to five days, sometimes a little longer, I have a problem actually starting this car up. But if I start it up every day, then it's completely fine. Doing some research, I hear that this is just the life of being a Mazda RX-8 owner. This is just how they start up. Basically, you just have to deal with it. But if you do a little bit more research, then you're going to realize that by pre-mixing, you actually not only that you're, you know, preventing from more engine wear, but you're also helping the apex seals uh, seal up a little bit better to your engine, give you a little bit more of that compression and help you actually help your vehicle start up a lot faster. If you look at the engine, uh, the problem with these engines are that there's uh, two oil ports and the way that they're located is right at the corners of the actual rotor. So they're not lubricating uh, the center portion of the apex seal. And this is why it's a lot more wear on the apex seals and stuff like that. And uh, this is why the engines, they don't last as long. So supposedly if you premix the fuel will actually get it to the portion of the apex seal that needs to be lubricated. And this is supposed to help with getting less engine wear. Now, is that true or not? I really don't know, but I know one thing is, i rather do some pre-mixing and in hopes of actually avoiding some of this problem than not. Also guys, of course you're probably already aware of, uh, but it is a good idea to use premium fuel in your Mazda RX-8. If you don't, then you're going to have issues but you see this one has a uh, pretty much ethanol shield and that is a good thing because most of the fuels nowadays they have ethanol in them and that is not good for your engine or any of your stuff but you see guys there is kind of like two sides uh to every coin by not pre-mixing, you're basically getting your engine to wear out a lot faster and basically cause it not to start up as good and you need an engine rebuild a lot sooner. But if you do pre-mix, then you run into a different problem, which uh, your catalytic converter just won't last because it's going to clog it up. So if your catalytic converter gets clogged up, then your Mazda RX-8 becomes so much weaker and then that's not good for you either. My Mazda RX-8 has 127,000 miles. I have no idea what kind of condition uh, my uh, catalytic converter is, uh, but I could tell this one thing, okay? Whenever my engine starts up and I'm driving, I could feel that my engine is strong. I could feel that there's power there. There's, it's got that oomph, okay? It just cannot really show it. It cannot really get up and go like, you know, at least I don't get that experience. And I think a lot of it is due to the catalytic converter uh, being kind of old and it's probably stuffed up and basically just cannot exhale. It inhales, but it cannot exhale. So this is why I actually decided to uh, upgrade my catalytic converter and um, I bought myself kind of like a racing catalytic converter. So basically a mid pipe. To those of you guys that know, uh, you know, it basically provides a little bit better breathing but the problem with some of these mid pipes is I think they have either really, uh, really bad uh, catalytic converters or they might not even have the catalytic converter, as, you know, to begin with. That means you're not going to pass inspection if you have a state that you have to pass inspection. I live in South Carolina. We don't have inspection here. So at least I don't have to worry about that portion. So in the next video or the video after that, I plan to basically do um, a mid, mid pipe uh, type of modification to my Mazda RX-8. And I will tell you if the performance actually increased or it hasn't. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep my catalytic converter, the original one, and I wanna clean it up 
because I'm pretty sure it's not an option to many of you guys just to switch out to a mid pipe that perhaps is now going to lead to a check engine light on and you're going to be failing inspection if you do have an inspection place in your state and that requirement. So you're probably going to look for an option of how to clean your catalytic converter and this is actually something I'm planning on doing. Also guys, I wanna speak a little bit on the starting issue of Mazda RX-8, just a little bit. I've noticed oil in my air tank box, okay, in my air box. I did not notice it before, but of course, um, I really never checked because I just got this Mazda RX-8 and that was the first opportunity that I got a chance to check. So I am not sure whether it's been there because it's just a little bit i've seen some that it's pretty much like i don't know like quarter inch full at the bottom of the plastic can you know of in engine oil i don't have none of that i had like normal type of dust but i noticed that towards the top of my uh air box it's got a big area like maybe like three inch uh, diameter type of circle of uh, area that it's uh it's basically oil and i could tell it is clean oil it is not dirty oil so i think i'm gonna need to upgrade to an oil catch can but here's what's going on according to some of the research that i did um when you actually do an oil change and you know sometimes your car you know like uh, oil light will come on like mine did it actually came on it it told me that my oil level is too low uh this is at the time when i just registered the car i just got ready to drive it so I took the dipstick out, I take a look at it and I'm seeing that I need one quart of oil. So I added one quart of oil. Then I decided to, you know, drove around and stuff like that. I was driving fine, no more oil light. Then I checked the air box because I decided to take a look in there, see what kind of condition it is. And um, I didn't have a replacement, so I ended up putting the same stuff back. It looked pretty clean, but I blew it out with, uh, you know, with my uh, blower anyways, blew everything out. Um, and then I noticed that oil in there and here's what I've heard many people have is that when they add that oil, when the, the car is actually asking for oil, you add it and then now you're getting oil inside of your um, uh, air box because the extra oil that is in there happens to come out and go right into your oil tank. Uh, excuse me. It goes right into your air box and that's not good. So that needs to be addressed. Uh, that's obviously a big, you know, a big problem because it gets to the point where it gets so bad that the air filter just soaked with oil and you cannot start up your vehicle because first of all, it cannot inhale, it cannot get air. And one of the things you need uh, for a car to start up, you're gonna need good spark, you're gonna need air and you're gonna need fuel. If it cannot get air, that's a problem. As you can see, I have, 127,000 miles on this thing. I have no clue what kind of condition the spark plug. The recommended spark plugs is obviously NG case uh, for this car. But here's the problem, guys. If you're gonna end up getting them on eBay, right now there's many imitations of NG case and other brands. Uh, you might be getting fake NG case on eBay, probably even Amazon. So it's becoming kind of like, I guess, unsafe to get brand name products on eBay or Amazon because they're being copied in China. They look exactly identical and you end up getting a part that might not perform. And that is a problem whether you're gonna get uh, spark plug wires by NGK or ignition coils by you know any brand that you're looking to get. They could be just an imitation product. Now, they might look alike. I don't know if they had the same performance. Um, I would really, not care if the performance is there you know at a cheaper cost even if it's fake but that goes without saying though if you're trying to get performance you're gonna get the real stuff and you may end up having to order through um through a supplier so today i'm actually going to order some ngk's um at my brother's shop he's actually recommended that i replace the you know the coils and the spark plug wires but you see, I don't like to replace stuff uh, on the car unless I really need to. And here's what I could see so far. I mean, my car for the most part, as you could see, you know, it starts up fine. So I don't see a reason for me to have to, you know, replace that. And, but 
there's obviously other issues that are involved. Right now, I got a PO661 code uh, that needs to be addressed. I already have the part for it, so one of the solenoids is going to need to be replaced for the SSV valve. Um, so once that gets addressed, I need to take a look if it, you know, if the chicken gel is going to go away, if the idle is going to be better, because right now I could hear the car idling and it's not stable. Um, also I have gotten a code, uh, in the past for multiple cylinder misfire. So some of the spark plugs may need to be replaced, but also one of the other things, uh, that my brother caught when we were actually looking underneath the hood of this thing, when I actually bought it, he says, Hey, one of your spark plugs is you know spark plug wires is uh not attached to the spark plug and i'm like well <laughs> i bought this car it was not able to start i started it with having that spark plug not plugged in but that's only like a slight little problem uh, there was actually corrosion on the spark plug wire that goes onto the you know uh, spark plug so that can be a pretty bad spark uh, I'm also not getting really good uh, fuel efficiency on this car. Um, I'm getting like 14 miles per gallon. And I'm actually, I'm gonna head to the gas station right now to actually do some uh, pre-mixing video. And I want to see how many miles per gallon this is right now. Guys, here's what I wanna show you. You see how it's 129 miles that I drove? Well, it was a full tank when I started. Take a look at it now. It drinks a lot of fuel. So now I'm going to actually drive to the gas station and my steering wheel, it's actually really hard to rotate. As you can see, my steering wheel icon is on. That's another common issue that these Mazda RX-8s are having. And mainly it's probably having to do uh, with you overfueling, uh, overfilling your radiator. So this is how it goes. You guys could probably time it see what it is but i think it's kind of slow uh to be honest it's not that i'm trying to do any street race or nothing it's just you know you get a mazda r8 if it's not performing then also the fuel economy is bad and everything else and it takes a lot of joy out of driving this car if the performance is not there now i'm at the fuel station i want to show you uh where the gas button is i know that seems obvious to many of you guys but some of you guys might not know it so i want to go ahead and actually show it especially for a new Mazda rx so what i want to do now is go ahead and actually hang this uh back and now that i have my four ounces i'm gonna go ahead and actually pour them in okay so we need to actually, well, this stuff is like really, really black. Let's see. It looks like some more is left. Well, I'm not looking where I'm filming. But anyways, we want to get some more of this stuff in there. Some stuff is lighter. Like I've seen some of that red stuff. It looked like it would be a better idea to, to, to use that, but it's a little bit more expensive. And it does not have ethanol uh, saver type of thing. So right now I have eight ounces of premix. We have 129 miles that we drove last time. I'm gonna go ahead and actually knock this down, measure it, and I'll let you guys know my fuel economy. But here's time. what I'm thinking, guys. There is a very good chance these spark plugs have never been replaced because I could kind of hear this idle. It's kind of weird. So it's a good idea to replace them. And I think as soon as I replace the spark plugs, um, I think the fuel economy is going to be even better. Uh, there's one video on YouTube that I've seen. Uh, there's a guy that has bought a used Mazda RX-8, not a new one. You know, he did some services on it, uh, obviously. He was able to drive 400 miles on a single tank. That's pretty amazing. You know, his buddies didn't think he could do it, but, you know, he actually done it. So that's a really good thing. So I'm pretty hopeful that if your Mazda RX-8, you know, is, is properly tuned, you know, you take care of it and stuff like that, 
then you'll be able to do the same. But you have to address some of these issues that it's having and then it's gonna be a beautiful car to own. It's gonna be really nice.